Hey everyone, this is your host, Dallin Wortham, host of the Charter School Connection podcast. Like always, I'm really excited for this episode, but before we introduce our guest on today's episode, I'm just going to go ahead and thank our sponsors, Charter Connect and Pact Class, formerly known as Enrolio, which is an automated enrollment software built by charter school administrators for charter schools to increase enrollment. But without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome our guest for today's show, Dr. Brian Dawes, the Executive Director at Athlos Academy. Welcome to the show, Brian. Well, good morning. Thank you, Dallin. It's great to be here and to join you today. Yeah, of course. Um, for people listening to this episode, I went a few days ago over to Athlos Academy and Brian walked me around their campus and I was <laughs> amazed. I was so excited to see children so excited um, to be at school and we'll dive it a little bit more into that as the episode rolls on. But um, I was super grateful for your time and for the chance to visit your campus. Um, so uh, Dr. Dawes, if you could tell us a little bit about how you got involved in education and then eventually the charter school community, that would be awesome. Fantastic. Well, uh, I started my career as a social studies teacher in the secondary school system or in the, in the district charter or district school system um, and taught, I, I'm a social studies composite major, but uh, was hired to teach health. And I was in a rural setting. <laughs> and so I was a single person department. Um, so after about the third year, I had taught um, about 95, 98% of the students that walked across the stage uh, for graduation, I had taught them. So. Um, if they needed the, if they had planned to, to graduate, they ended up needing to pass my class at some point. Um, and then even the foreign exchange students, I, I taught driver's ed on the side. So, no that, yeah, so <laughs> it, that ended up picking up even more, uh, a higher percentage of the students at the end. Um, but, uh, periodically yeah, I'd be assigned to teach social studies classes. So I've taught everything from, um, any of the social studies classes from AP economics to uh, concurrent enrollment so, uh, sociology for one of the local colleges. And then along with that, the regular classrooms. And then my last year in the classroom, I was transferred to the middle school. And so I've taught everything from seventh grade Utah history to the first, second year college uh, sociology. So um, that's Whoa. kind of my experience in teaching. Um, in a rural setting, um, after seven years, um, I was hired as a as a bubble employee, and could see that the bubble was passing through, and that's why they transferred me to the junior high. District wide, I was still this the lowest person on the seniority chart, and so I I went into it the administrative certification program, um, and about that last that seventh year of teaching, there was an opening that came up. And uh, it terrified me, but I, I jumped into the world of elementary education and had the opportunity to be a principal in a district uh, elementary for 17 years. Wow. Um, so that in, 20, uh, in 2002 as an administrator and then uh, finished up 25 years in the public school system and then uh, it moved up to the from rural up into the Salt Lake Valley, um, spending a year and a half in a another public school district, and then from there tried a couple of years in a in a private school, and then um, two years ago had the opportunity to join the charter school world, and found that it was kind of the love child between um, the prop the public school uh, district as well as the private. And uh, yeah, the private school and, and finding that sweet spot in the middle of a lot of the best things of both, where you have uh, more of the, the freedoms and, and uh, opportunities to, to make curriculum decisions um, and just really have enjoyed that opportunity to be able to, to really uh, make more executive decisions in, in leading a, a charter um, 
and really I, I was fortunate to be able to find Athos Academy that um, I feel like the curriculum and the, the pillars that our school represents really match me as a person. So I didn't have to contort myself into a person that I'm not, but yeah. I can really stand uh, strong with, with the, the performance character traits and the, the priorities of our charter. And, and so it really was a, a real natural fit and been able to just love and enjoy the, this change. That is awesome. And what was it like going from, you know, public to private then to charter? What, was it a big transition and a big jump or was it smaller than what some of us might think? Uh, I, I don't, you know, it, 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 the, the, the private school setting was, was different. Um, it, it kind of brought in, I, I felt like in the district um, that if we would run things a little more business-like, make decisions a little more uh, from a, a more business oriented approach um, that it would make things easier and better in a district. Um, then you go right into a pub, into a, a private where it is a business. And um, the one I was with was a, a very unique setting where uh, we had a private benefactor that this was a pet project of hers. And so we didn't face a lot of the budget uh, pressures that many um, schools would, and and so now coming to a charter, it's it's been bumpy along the way, learning different roles and responsibilities, finding you know who are, wears what hats and and how many of these hats are going to fit on my head and which ones do I have to can I share which ones can't I share? Um, that's been one of the the unique things of of making that transition. Understood. Well. If you could tell us a little bit about um, that transition period and uh, maybe why you chose to come to Athos. Well, actually, you kind of already did mention that. You mentioned about the pillars and whatnot. But could you tell us maybe a little bit about what it was like when you got boots on the ground at Athos and then what makes it so unique? Because each charter school is almost like an individual. It's just there is no charter school that's like another charter school. Each one is so different and um, offers a different type of education. So could you tell us a little bit about Athlos and what makes it different from other charter schools here in Utah? Sure. I um, I think my first experience with the, with the charter world was uh, I had interviewed for a different charter school and mm -hmm. I read their charter and it was beautiful. Um, <laughs> I just, I, I was so impressed. And as I went through the interview, um, perhaps I didn't ask the question um, as tactfully or as appropriately because I, I don't know um, how it was received. It didn't seem to be received from the perspective that I had asked. But my question to them was, um, how close do you reflect in your classrooms and in your school this charter? And the board members and the administrators that were part of that, that committee that were doing the, the interviewing Ho hummed around that of well, it's our ideal, um, and and that's what we're working towards. And I, it it took me a little while to really appreciate and understand that, um, because I, I think with each charter it is so unique, and and finding the right match between the uniqueness of the charter, the uniqueness and needs of the school, and the administrator skills is a is an essential um, component that needs to to be re, be considered. Mm -hmm by uh, school administrators when they're, whether they have extensive experience or they're not new. And it, I think the same with the, our classroom teachers is um, you can have great teachers and if they just don't fit the structure, they're not effective in that building, but they could be hired down the street or in a different setting and, and be all-stars. Um, yeah. and, and so I think that was one of the, as I delved into charters, um, I was really relieved to find Athlos Academy. We have the three pillars. Our first one is healthy bodies. And so um, our, our building is set up and, and you had the opportunity to tour and anyone who'd like to is welcome to tour. Um, we have a full-size hardwood floor gym. 
uh, for basketball court with bleachers. And then connected to that, we have 30 yards of indoor artificial turf. Um, so that each day, each of our classes, our, our master schedule set up so that each class has at least 40 minutes of time with a trained coach um, for athletics. Mm -hmm. And we're a K through not uh, well K through eight program right now, looking back at uh, maybe adding our ninth grade again. Um, but every student has that opportunity to have structured PE every day. Um, and with the reinforcements to help develop that healthy body. Yeah. And to that, we, we have our teachers work with movement breaks and, and so that they're, the students are in motion and given that opportunity to burn off the energy and to make sure that we're not just saying, okay, we have healthy bodies, but we have the structure and the master schedule in place to reinforce that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's one thing that I noticed was when I tour schools, each school is different and different is different. It's not bad, just different. Um, but the uh, sometimes I'll see some student bodies that are a little bit more rowdy than others, and that's okay. Um, but at um, your school, when kids were walking the halls, they were so relaxed, so quiet, so respectful, because they got the wiggles out. I, I remember seeing a PE class where they were playing soccer on your indoor turf, and they were doing setting up for free kicks. It was like a real soccer game, and it had a lot on the line. The kids were, were really wanting to win both teams, but it was great sportsmanship. And then I saw some of those same students a few minutes later out in the hall, and they were just walking nice and quiet in a line behind their teacher. I thought, wow, these kids get to move around. They get to wiggle. Like, I'm not obviously not every school is the same, but um, it is a little difficult when you go to a charter school that's maybe just in a small storefront that doesn't have the space to run around, especially in the winter time when you can't get outside. And um, I could definitely see the benefit of that pillar of healthy body and making that essential part of your education so that when it is time to get in the classroom and learn, they're, they're ready to go. The blood's already circulated and they're, they're ready to learn. Yeah, we, we do like to see that. Uh, we do feel like it, it reduces a lot of the behavior. Uh, we certainly have probably the, the same dynamics of, of students that uh, each of the charters are facing with kids with anxiety, kids with uh, ADD, ADHD, and and others, um, but there's something about movement that that calms that whole central nervous system and helps with the focus and helps with uh, the readiness for learning. And, and so I, I'm glad that, you know, it's it's not just, hey, we do healthy bodies, but we have the facilities, we have the, the design, the structure design in our master schedule, in our teacher planning, um, so that we can we can make good on that. Mm -hmm. Our yeah. second pillar is is um, oh goodness the healthy bodies the is is our first one and then the second one has to do with prepared minds there we go um, and certainly that comes to high quality instruction uh, having good curriculum and making sure that the the education that the students are receiving is top notch mm -hmm. uh, and working with our teachers to make sure that you know everything uh, is in place so that they have the tools so they can be in fact effective in the classroom. Awesome. And we've uh, been working with the, the A2A for instructional improvement as well. Um, the uh, um, assessment to achievement program that the state of Utah contracts uh, with and, and our school is fortunately to, fortunate enough to be selected where in year one of that and really excited about the coaching that's happening with our teachers. And helping, I, I, I'm sure we're not that unique in that we have a number of our teachers that are on alternate licensing routes. We have those that are finishing up degrees mm -hmm. and we have licensed. And, and so it's really helping us to, to close the gap in the lack of experience or the newness to the career mm -hmm. um, in having those resources. And then our third component is performance character and our performance character traits. We have 12 of them. They range from integrity to curiosity, um, focus and self-control, grit, um, and then there's a total of 12 of them. And every 12 weeks, um, 
the the attribute will uh, recycle. And so every week we have a performance character, the trait that's our highlight. This week is creativity. And so there's many lessons that the students get reinforced with. And 12 weeks ago it was creativity and in 12 weeks it'll be it again. And so it's not just a one hit. Here's your attribute. Um, mm -hmm. But they get that reinforced and it's a shared vocabulary around us of, you know, are you showing integrity in the way that you're you're treating uh, each other or you know, it, when, if it comes down to maybe some dishonesty in the classroom, let's reinforce that and connect it. Uh, students, we we need to pull ourselves together and, and let's show some focus. And, you know, it gives us as a school administration a certain amount of shared vocabulary as well when we're working with discipline issues and challenges along those lines. So I, those three pillars, I, I they're embedded into our, our school and just really provide that that strong framework of what we offer. Um, one thing that is also unique about Athos, uh, our full title right here is Athos Utah, or Athos Academy Utah, because we do have uh, a campus in Louisiana and a couple up in Minnesota. Um, we are part of a national organization. And if you're looking at and saying, gosh, you know, some of these sound really good, we do offer the curriculums and, and some of these that you don't necessarily have to become an athlete school, but we do offer uh, some of those that would be available if those are some characteristics or things that you would like to incorporate into your charter. That's awesome. And if I'm someone that's looking to either find a new curriculum or just shake up my current one, what makes your curriculum uh, a good fit for, for me if I'm looking for a new curriculum? I, I mean, if you're looking for the social skills, it, it's just really comprehensive that awesome. on a day to day, I mean, for our athletic coaches, the, the lesson plans are 180 days. And so some days it might be you're working on a badminton unit with your kids. And then it might be uh, the next week, like you had mentioned, soccer or uh, we had one class that was doing basketball while well, that soccer game was going on and, and the kids were learning more of the technique of mm -hmm. dribbling, not just here's a ball and throw it at the basket. Yeah. So it, it, it's, but those lesson plans are available. They're ready. The social skills with our performance character are also available with daily quotes, uh, messages, uh, thoughts to, to consider, um, and even writing assignments or journaling assignments that the kids can, can be a part of so that it it can be used instead of just a, a one hit. OK, we talked about this in our morning meeting uh, and now it's the end of the day. We're doing our closing huddle. Um, let's let's regroup and how can we be ready uh, to show this character more in effect tomorrow? I so, love it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, very cool. Um, as I met with you and as I meet with every charter school administrator, um, there's always obstacles to overcome. And that's not necessarily bad things or challenges um, per se, but just things that need to be overcome on a daily basis as a school. Um, so what tips and tricks maybe have you gained over the past, um, obviously 30 um, years of education and experience, but especially over the past two years working in the charter school space, um, that you could share with other charter school administrators that might be going through something similar and how you've approached the situation, how you've come out stronger from it. Um, anything that comes to mind there? I think it's developing a good relationship with your board, certainly, mm. um, and really finding out what is their priority um, and, and what is the focus that they want you to be addressing, especially when you're coming in new to any school. Um, we can do a needs assessment. We can do um, any number of rubrics that can help us to find out what the problems are. But um, it's it's really sometimes sitting down and saying, and the and my skill set is, and the, the highest priority to address right now would be um, some of the challenges we're facing is is uh, enrollment is always one. We uh, last year or somehow uh, over the last few years we've developed a really good relationship with our our immigrant population in our community. And we saw a large increase in Venezuelan uh, students that have moved into our community. 
and we've developed the trust in that community. And so now we have a higher percentage of students that are non-English speakers. And so it's, it's caused us to really work hard to develop a robust MLL program and, and offer the services, um, being able to make sure that we have people throughout the school that have interpreter opportunity or they're bilingual so that we can provide the proper communications and outreach to the students in the classroom. Um, it, it takes a, a certain level of creativity of how do we best do this when, um, you know, are we able to hire teachers that have that bilingual uh, skill or multilingual in some cases, and, and then can we get them in the right uh, partnerships and uh, teams uh, or grade level teams and things like that so that that we're able to service all of our students. Um, I, I wish I could really put my finger on how we develop that community relationship with it. Um, but fortunately for us, uh, we did. And I think a lot of it just does come down to that inviting atmosphere, um, having receptionists that are, have the ability to converse in English or Spanish. Mm -hmm. And then it just trickles down from there throughout the school that the parents feel welcome. We've used creativity in setting up an after school language program. Um, we have a, a couple of our teachers that are very passionate and uh, one of them came as a, a as a multi-language learner as a teen and wow. he's just let it out of of been able to with the out he, he saw a year ago of just the division and so he came to me with a proposal of can we do an after school program and so they were meeting four days a week two hours every day uh, monday through thursday um and these kindergarten first through fourth graders would would do an extra session and the parents would drop off a meal for them because they needed an after school not just a snack but they needed a meal um, and the the parents just demanded uh, are we going to continue this during the summer and we didn't have the funding but the parents paid um, to have their students participate and so they would come four days a week from nine until 11 30 12 o'clock three days or four days a week during the summer for language enrichment um, so that their kids could become fluent and this is a, a population where the parents are not english fluent but they were committed to their kids and willing to put the money forward we were able to acquire a grant an innovations grant that is going to be able to fund it this year as well as into the summer um, but it's it's really this came after we already had the confidence of the community but it, it caused us to how can we be more creative and listening to the teachers that are there saying here's a need and here's an idea and i i love that as a leader being able to say how can i how can i uh, support the idea and what is it as an administrator i need to be able to do do we need to you know allocate uh more classroom space do we you know how do we make this work and in after school programs pretty simple, uh, especially where we don't offer busing to our school. So everything is either the students either walk or the parents are picking up. And so having them pick up their kids two hours later or an hour this year, they're doing it an hour a day, four days a week. Um, so from 3.30 to 4.30, these kids are getting some pretty intensive language intervention. And, and we were really seeing the, the fruits of that. Um, we now have two full classrooms. Um, that are servicing about 45 to about between 40 and 50 students on a daily basis that are getting that extra intensive on top of what they're getting with the MLL interventions and, and throughout the day. But it's really remediating those basic language skills. Awesome. So I'm, I guess if we boil down all of that great insight, it's relationships with your board relationships with the community relationships with parents relationships with teachers and that comes from listening you've mentioned a couple times I, I don't know how blah 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 I don't know how we did this but then you followed up by saying but we listened and they were asking for this and so we helped provide that and then the, the board members said this and so we it sounds like it's, it's relationship building via active listening um which i think is gold 
Awesome. I can tell you if I've, I've learned one thing as, as a school administrator is if, if, the, if this school or any school that I've been in charge of was depending on my intellect to be effective, then we, we should shut it down yesterday <laughs> because I'm not smart enough to do it. But I can lead a team of a lot of intelligent people. And, and fortunately in education, we have the privilege of working with some very intelligent people that are very passionate and caring. And, and when, I, when I step outside of myself and listen and pay attention to their impact or their input, pay attention to their uh, insights, we, when we've been able to do that, th there's been times where I've gone into a faculty meeting or into a leadership team meeting with an issue and a solution, a solution that I thought was pretty darn good. But then as we turn it over to the team and we discuss it, I have never once left that discussion with the same idea or the same solution and I have always walked out with an idea and a solution that was 10 times better because, awesome. you know, you can go to Covey in his uh, seven habits. I mean, it, it creates the synergy, it creates the buy-in, it, it has shared ownership, and it's not just me dictating and directing. It's, it's a team coming together and saying, here's an issue, and here's what I'm willing to do to be a part of it and have skin in the game. Um, when as a, I guess I'm not a good boss, but I do know how to lead, <laughs> and, and there there's a big difference in how you choose as a as a school administrator. Are you going to lead or are you going to be a boss? And um, I feel like my board is my boss. They gave me the the clear direction when I was first hired that my number one focus needed to be on community relations and reestablishing. Where I don't know our, our charter school we we opened up in 2017. We started out at an enrollment of over 1,100 students. Um, there's been challenges over the, these, the years that we've been open. And right now we have an opportunity to rebuild our reputation and our image in our local community. And that was really the assignment that I was given. And so I work with the rest of my team to help take care of a lot of the other the other things so that I can be out in the community, out in the events with the parents, um, doing those things to really strengthen the school community as a as a school, but also as a part of our city in our community. That's awesome. I love that. And I completely agree with everything that you said. Um, at Charter Connect, when it started in 2021, it was just me and my twin brother. And now it's developed into a team and the very same thing happens whenever I listen and people actively participate, synergy, seven habits, then just magic happens. It's, it's crazy to just see how our efforts will multiply and um, the fruits will, of what we do are just so robust and incredible versus if it's hey this is the problem this is my solution we're going to enact it now and we need everyone to buy in then that doesn't go very well because it's not the best idea it's not the best solution for maybe a problem that isn't even really the problem and then it's getting people to change their habits their way of thinking the the way that they approach an issue and it's kind of putting them in a box and so i completely agree with everything that you just said it's so much better when we do it together like if you want to move fast go alone if you want to go far go together um, definitely and i my goal is is i realize that at some point my career is going to uh, reach the the time of retirement um and or that a change in, in schools will happen. Um, but my goal is that wherever I finish, um, if I lead the people, it will build a culture, a culture of achievement. And that culture, the, the teachers will fight to keep that because if it's a working, thriving culture, then it's a, it's a, 
especially in a charter, then it's the it's hitting the business model that is expected, and it's going to be there for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I think a boss, the the everyone will play along as long as the boss is there. But mm-hmm. if we can lead our people, help them to catch the vision, teach them to the vision, build it together. Um, you have that that culture that's going to live well beyond any my single career or any one of our careers yeah and then then that continues to just bless the lives of of thousands of kids well beyond the Mm -hmm. time i completely agree in a previous episode on the charter school connection anders lindgren from school ops mentioned something similar to what you just said uh, that there are these administrators that are the superhero administrators where if they're not around everything falls apart and it's because they do their job so well, but a superhero administrator is actually not what you need. What you need is a great, excellent administrator and an excellent administrator administrates in a way where the system operates with or without them. And it's the team, it's not so much, you know, the team relying on the superhero to save them at the end of the day. Um, and so I completely agree. I would um, rather my my faculty see my fingerprints all over things rather than my face, you know, <laughs> or see oh, my okay. shadow. That it's a, it's been that my my impact has been there, but they can take ownership because they're they've been the face of of the innovation. They've been the face of the change because I I don't need it, um, yeah. but I need the results and I I need their their top notch performance. But um, the everything that comes from their success is my success but i i don't need to be the one in front mm-hmm. um receiving all the I, I am the face of of that that lead the leadership team but um they they all have a voice yeah perfect well before we wrap up um dr Dawes, is there any resource that you would like to recommend other charter school administrators read or listen to or participate in if they're kind of looking to expand on what you've touched on? You know, I, I'll, I'll spend some time uh, if they want to check the, the resources listed below and then they can see those right now. I mean, seven habits is just become such a foundational vocabulary yeah. um, and the cubby book of the speed of trust uh, was definitely a, a powerful one. Those are not the most current uh, resources um, that that are really um, one of them that I just finished was the score takes care of itself. It's an out of print and it's the leadership philosophies of Jack Walsh. The, the, I hope I got the right name there. The 49ers uh, coach awesome. from the 1980s and, and into the 90s. That uh, is it. That was a, a real profound read to just go through. Um, but I'll, I'll add some others in that one. Uh, one of the best resources I have um, it, that's part of my leadership team is, is we're associated with a management company, SMS, and, and um, definitely having the sounding board where a lot of times leadership is a lonely place to be, um, whether you're in a district, private or in charter. Um, and it, it's nice to have a network to turn to um with others who have insights when you are confronting an unusual situation or one that um is (laughs) a little more complicated so having that that extra viewpoint i i really earlier asked about that transition and i'd have to just say that team helped that transition and they are definitely available and willing to jump in to assist whichever charter schools uh, are looking for some assistance, whether it's from a financial, whether it's from a curriculum specialist uh, uh, operations. And uh, it, it, anyway, the, the, we'll put their link. Uh, I'll share that link as well. Fantastic. Cool. Yeah, we'll include all of those in the show notes um, for people to check out if they want to dive more into that. But Dr. Brian Doss, thank you so much for your time today. It really means a lot that you would take time out of your busy schedule to share your insights with us. Well, thank you for the invitation, Dallin. It's been a pleasure. And and anyone that's interested, you're welcome to uh, give me a call and, and come on by and see what we've got. And, and I love the system we have. And I I am so excited that uh, 
I, I feel like we offer something special and that it can help any of the charters if 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 you're needing a struggle, if you need the help or you're you have a question or a struggle. Perfect. Thanks for that open invite. I'm sure some someone will take you up on it. <laughs> Thank you. You're no, thank you so much. Do.